Welcome to Hospitality Insider on Connie TV with your host, Connie Kim. Hospitality Insider is an intimate look of the who's who in the hospitality industry. Up close and personal, you'll meet amazing leaders and discover their stories of successes and challenges that will inspire, educate, and entertain. With your help, we unite, we co-create, and we support each other to create better service in the hospitality industry and contribute to the world. Hospitality Insider, your window to hospitality excellence. Welcome to another episode of Hospitality Insider on Connie TV. I'm Connie Kim, and today we have honored guest Tom Cochran, chairman of Felco Lodging Trust. Thank you so much, Tom, joining us this morning. Thank you, Connie. And uh, I know that uh, Felco Lodging has a really, truly unique culture, and I know that you are a wonderful cook. So tell us a little bit about uh, what the Falco Lodging is doing and how you get started. Well, uh, let's see. How, well, we got started because uh, the, another guy b uh, by the name of Hervey Feldman and I decided that we were going to start our own company. And we started out with one hotel in Dallas back in uh, 91. And uh, the name Felcor comes from the, f uh, the first three letters of his name Feldman and the first three of mine and that's how we came up with the name. Wonderful. Um, we just decided that uh, uh, we wanted to build our own company and uh, so we started out with one hotel and uh, uh, we just did it. So now how, uh, 1991, so this now you have how many hotels you're managing? Well, today we own, uh, you know, in more than 40 hotels, right. but, you know, Felcor's gone through this evolution of, you know, at our peak we had over 200 hotels. Uh, so we've gone through this uh, uh, growth spurt we, up till 2000, we had about uh, 200 hotels. Today we've, we've, uh, uh, we've shrunk the portfolio considerably and then concentrated more on quality of hotels in some of the major markets. Oh, okay. So would you tell us exactly what Felco Lodging Trust does? We own hotels, which yeah. is a REIT, which is mm -hmm. what a REIT does. Right. Uh, REITs are our tax advantage in that so long as you uh, uh, pay out 90% of your uh, 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 taxable income mm -hmm. in dividends, then you don't pay any corporate tax. Right. And so uh, we own hotels. We don't manage hotels right. because in order to be a REIT uh, in the hotel industry, you have to have third-party management. Right, right. Yeah, and a lot of people took that advantage of the REIT at the time. Is it still as alive as what it was when you started REIT? Yeah, it's bigger, actually. REITs really? have become more popular uh -huh. uh, as, a, as a way to own hotels. There are right. a lot of large REITs today, uh, and it's a you know, several billion dollar industry, um, and it is a very efficient way to own hotels. And uh, I think the REITs have become very, uh, I wouldn't say dominant, but they're certainly a big player in the hotels industry today. Oh, that's fantastic. So now that, uh, how did you get started in the hotel industry? Um, I usually tell people I started as a dishwasher in Topeka, Kansas, which is true. <laughs> in Kansas, yes. And uh, so as most, uh, I mean, one of the great things about the hotel industry is it, it is a place where anybody who is who was willing to work hard usually can succeed. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was very fortunate in that I uh, started out and uh, fell in love with the business and um, made it my career. Wow, that's, that's great. So now, the, uh, can you tell us uh, some advice how to open up a lodging trust company? Uh, you gotta have guts. <laughs> that's one thing. Uh, <laughs> You know, there's a certain amount of, I don't know, um, th there is a certain amount of entrepreneurship uh, that exists with all hotel people. You've right. got to be an optimist. you got to yeah. feel good about um, 
yourself, you gotta you gotta be willing to take risk. Mm -hmm. Like all entrepreneurs, you, t you start a company, you gotta be willing to take a risk. Right. And not all things turn out like you think they will, uh, and sometimes they do. But there's no magic other than you. Uh, you gotta have uh, you gotta have some guts. You gotta have some money. Uh, well, I always tell people when Herbie and I started Felcor, the first three years we. Uh, never took a paycheck. Right. So that's one of the risks of mm -hmm. starting the company. That's right. That's right. Yeah, that is very common. The owners uh, are the last to come that's right. to make money. Yeah. You know, but I know that you have a wonderful culture, that it's a family atmosphere in your company. And I still remember the wonderful meal you cooked for us in your home. Right. And where did you get the passion of learning how to cook? Probably my mother. My yeah. mother's a great cook. And I always tell people uh, who, who try to label me a, as a chef uh -huh. that I'm not a chef, certainly never trained as one, but I actually you know, worked in kitchens, but I've always just had a passion for cooking that I think I got from her. Uh -huh. And I think I enjoy doing it for, you know, when I started doing it back um, at the company, I did it as a way to you know, bring everybody together. Meals are one of those things where you, um, you share, people like to eat still. Um, and uh, as, as Felcor evolved, you know, I started doing cooking teams. And mm. I found that if you want to know what people are like, uh, put them in a the kitchen with you. <laughs> and you'll find out what they're like. Yeah. Like they say, too many cooks uh, spoil the food, right? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's interesting. There are some people that I would see in the hallways who when I get them in the kitchen, I would go, my, you're bossy. But I never would see it when I would just say hello. Yeah, but it was, it's always fun. That's and great. you get to know people. That's great. So now you have a chairman's lunch that in your company. Can you explain a little bit on that? Well, we do a lunch usually the last Friday of every month. And all the employees, uh, we all, I, we meet, we have a cooking team. I mean, through the years, I've, I've done different ways of doing it, but generally, what it is is a cooking team of usually four to five people. Um, we put together a theme, we put together the menu, we put together the decorations. Uh, we decorate in the theme. Uh, for example, we did it last Friday because I think the coming up Friday didn't work. So the theme we did this last Friday was Super Bowl. So we decorated the oh, with, with yes. all the Super Bowl yes. memorabilia around. And then we did Super Bowl foods. And mm. so we had uh, four people on the team. And then we uh, we all um, put together the menu, and then we met at uh, seven o'clock in the morning, and we cooked for we cooked for about seventy five people. Wow, that, that that's great. That really generates a team spirit, doesn't yeah, it? it does, yeah, it does. Yeah, yeah, people like that. When we come back, we want to find out from Tom what is the big challenges and how he has overcome. It. Thank you for watching. Don't go away. Welcome to Hospitality Insider on Connie TV with your host, Connie Kim. Hospitality Insider is an intimate look of the who's who in the hospitality industry. Up close and personal, you'll meet amazing leaders and discover their stories of successes and challenges that will inspire, educate, and entertain. With your help, we unite, we co-create, and we support each other to create better service in the hospitality industry and contribute to the world. Hospitality Insider, your window to hospitality excellence. I am Fausto Jimenez, Vice President for Standards at Grupo Posadas, and you're watching. You are watching. And you're watching. You are watching. You are watching. Connie TV. Connie TV. In Connie TV. Connie TV. Connie TV. Dot TV. Welcome back to Hospitality Insider with Tom Cochran, Chairman of Falco Lodging Trust. Tom, thank you so much for sharing your wonderful stories. You know, I heard that that Felcor is one of the best companies to work in Dallas. And I know you have a lot of different things to boost the morale of your employees. 
And Bob, what is the best, biggest challenge that you have? Uh, well, I think the biggest challenge for any company is that people like where they work. I mean, I think that um, uh, I actually tell people that I want people who who uh, don't say TGI t t TGI Friday. I mean, they're waiting for Friday because they want the weekend. <laughs> yes. I want people to wake up on Monday and say, I I'm looking forward to going to work. Yeah. So I think I always thought uh, that you know, work is a big part of our lives, mm -hmm. and you got to enjoy where you work. You got to enjoy who you're working for and who you're working with. And if that is accomplished, I think the rest of your life is a lot more fun That's if you actually do enjoy going to work, right. not as a job, but you actually like what you're doing. So when you're looking for people, as what is the quality you're looking for? Um, I think you gotta like people, you gotta be, I mean, I, I don't think you're a, if you're the type of person that likes to close up your office and shut the door, and not interact. So you got to have that the social skills to interact with people and you want people who actually I mean one of the jokes around the office is most people in the interview process is that they're asked do you know how to cook? <laughs> what can you cook well? It's not a qualification to work there. That's right. But but if they ha and there are a lot of people who come to work who who, who don't like cooking. Mm -hmm. But we're going to put them in the kitchen. Uh, and we're going to help them and teach them how to cook, whether they like it or not. <laughs> <laughs> That's a really most unique way to really building the team spirit. And, right. uh, and so now, what is, what is the best way of managing this lodging trust company? Best way of managing? I, you know, I don't know. Um, one of the things I've always been, uh, I guess, opposed to generally are there's not a lot of rules. I mean, I, I've never been, been a big believer that you have a set of rules and procedures on how you run a company. I think you, you either know the right things to do or you don't. And I think if you treat people with respect and you at the same time try to have a good time, you know, you don't need a lot of rules and there's not a lot of, I couldn't write a handbook on what to do to make a Felcor culture. I think it's it's in people to either want to be that way or not. So I, 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 I I'm not sure it's bookable. I'm oh, not sure you're right. so it's just coming from the heart. It is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So share with us with your success story. What do you are you so proud of that you have accomplished? Well, uh, probably having a bunch of grandkids, but <laughs> probably one of the greatest successes, other than starting Felcor, was uh, actually um, uh, buying Chuck E. Cheese. And I, early in my career back in the 80s, and buying it out of bankruptcy and turning it around um, and actually going public. And today it's a very, very successful company. And um, again, I think that's one of, those, one of those concepts where it's about family, it's about birthdays is a big part of it. And, and I think that's, and, and I'm, I'm glad to see it a part of uh, American culture today. My parents may not always agree right. because when they go there, they go, oh, I hate going there. But, <laughs> but it is, in, in fact, a part of our uh, culture in America today. Oh, yes. Uh, children have a great time and yeah. there's no child is not want to go to Chuck E. Cheese. Right. That's right. You're right. right. So now you took a lot of companies to public that you started uh, Felco Lodging in 1991, but right. you took it three years later, right. took it public and Chuck E. Cheese, and you took it public. What is the process that, you know, taking company to public? Uh, pay lawyers a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, very that's the good truth. Word. That's right. And you write up everything and you <laughs> disclose. Um, you know, the, the, there's got to be a demand for public companies and for what the, the management team and the concept. And so um, it, it's a way to raise capital, but it gives you exposure. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I don't know that I ever had a desire to be public. I don't know that I thought about it that mm. way as much as uh, when I understood what a. Uh, I never knew what a REIT was back in the uh, late '80s, early '90s. But when I began to understand what it was and what it could do and what how you could raise capital, uh, I found it a very efficient way to raise money. Is what you're basically doing. Oh yes, doing. yes. Well, that's great. So now that. Everybody is talking about how great the industry is coming up, and the uh, next uh, three, four years is going to be booming. And so, how do you feel about that, and what is your plan 
for that? Well, I, you know, I think we are in a, in a great period of time. I think the business is doing great. Um, you know, we're, we're going to, at Felcor, we're going to continue to execute the strategy we've been on for several, uh, several years. Uh, uh, the Rick Smith, the CEO, has had a plan to, you know, sell off some of the lower performing hotels and build better hotels. Uh, we're about to open next month uh, the Knickerbocker in New York at 42nd oh, yes. and Broadway, which is a, rather, it's an iconic hotel. Um, and I think uh, um, that's going to be a lot of fun. And I just think the, in, the industry is going through some really great times right now. Right. It's everywhere, everywhere. So well, how do you see a global market opening up? Well, you know, I don't know. That, you know, Felcor uh, doesn't really, I, you know, we see, stay fairly focused on the U.S. But I think, you know, the, the, we definitely, United States tourism, you know, it's still one of the greatest exports that we have today right, right. In, in the United States. And I think more and more people are beginning to travel. Um, uh, from outside the United States into the United States, they're easing up uh, a lot of the of the uh, visa restrictions, and there's uh, more visa waiver countries mm -hmm. coming in, and yes. I think all of that's going to add to, to increased tourism. I mean, yesterday that when the, during the discussion they were talking about, you know, the the dollar today and the, where the euro is and the difficulty and how more much more expensive it is for the Europeans to come over here. Mm -hmm but it's just one of those cycles we're going through right, right now. Right. But international tourism and, glo and the, the world being globalized and, and people actually, because that's the best way for people to get to know each other is to, is to have uh, tourism. Yes, when we come back, let's find out what is Tom's future plan. Don't go away. Welcome to Hospitality Insider on Connie TV with your host, Connie Kim. Hospitality Insider is an intimate look of the who's who in the hospitality industry. Up close and personal, you'll meet amazing leaders and discover their stories of successes and challenges that will inspire, educate, and entertain. With your help, we unite, we co-create, and we support each other to create better service in the hospitality industry and contribute to the world. Hospitality Insider. Your window to hospitality excellence. Hi, I'm DB Kim with Darf Design, and you're watching. You're watching. And you're watching. And you are watching. And you're watching Connie TV. Connie TV. Connie TV. Connie TV. Connie TV. The first internet channel for the hospitality industry. Watch and follow who she brings and what she brings to show you, to inspire. Connie TV dot TV. I love it. Welcome back to Hospitality Insider with Tom Cochran, chairman of Felco Lodging Trust. Thank you, Tom, for all these wonderful things you are sharing with us. And now that, what is your future plan? My future? Uh, get up as many mornings as I can for the rest of my life. <laughs> 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 well, you know, I one of the things I love doing, I, I still enjoy doing a lot, is uh, doing some development work, which I'm doing out in California and Santa Monica and San Diego, which I absolutely enjoy. Um, I uh, uh, opened up a restaurant with my son in Dallas, which uh, in the Lakewood part of town, which is, sells hot dogs and hamburgers, oh. uh, which I'm having fun playing with. Yeah. I actually usually work on Saturday, yes. uh, and I'm qualified to clean the tables generally, uh, but I actually enjoy doing that. Uh, you know, I'm still very active in the industry in the uh -huh. American Hotel Lodging Association. Right. Uh, very passionate about uh, governmental affairs, yes. working in Washington, D.C., and, and a big believer in giving back uh, uh, to the industry, which I, which I do follow uh, considerably. And, uh, and most importantly, I intend to have fun. Well, that's good. Life is fun and in every moment that we enjoy. But so you know, the program we also have in our TV channel, that the program is a, a giving back. And that's what we feature. So would you share with us a little bit about your giving back program and how and what you do? 
Well, we picked, you know, it's interesting. When you start a company, one of the things that all, most people do is they try to come to you with their idea why you ought to give them money. And, but, but I think companies need to pick something that they can be passionate about and that they, they can believe in. And it's not just something you give money to, but you actually do something. Right. And uh, for the first probably 15 years, uh, we did juvenile diabetes. And we raised oh, in Dallas yes. over a couple million dollars. Wow. Uh, our company did. And what mm -hmm. we did is every day, we did. it was part of our culture. We did mm -hmm. something. We, would, we actually, even today we still do it. We sell popcorn in, our, in, the, in the lobby of our, of our uh, office. Uh, with the proceeds going to whatever charity. Mm -hmm. We switched about six years ago to, uh, to uh, autism. And so we, uh, and in the company we have walks, we do something that uh, we have, uh, someone put out an email and said, look, I got an extra lawn, I got a lawnmower I don't need, and I'll auction it off with the proceeds going to, to uh, juvenile autism. diabetes or or whatever whatever's yeah. going on so right. it becomes part of your culture right. and you think about it every day and do something yeah that's great you know that's the same thing is like you said becoming part of a culture is a sustainability right then everybody is doing something and so much awareness of that and so share with us your thoughts about how what we should do to save this earth well um you know, I think we're, we're all seeing people trying to do something. I mean, uh, it, again, I think it it's like culture. It's, you're, you're seeing green initiatives in the hotel industry. You're beginning to see people who are thinking about uses uh, and, and, and making it front of the mind. So you actually are conscious about it. Right. And so um, I think in the, in the industry now, I think it is a part of our DNA to think about being green and That's most right. of the brands have come out with whether it's green engaged they've come out with some way that people are very conscientious about it right. and i think that does change how you act if you're conscious about it that's uh, really wonderful isn't it so i mean we did a survey of uh, people whether they would stay in the hotel that is green hotel will pay five percent more and then it was very preferable so you know, this is really wonderful things that's happening. So now you have a lot of hotels that you process to keep renovating, right? Right. So that process of renovating, so can you just share with us what is the steps that you go through? Well, I think first is you gotta know what you're doing and, and, and probably the, one of the most important steps is hiring the right designer, hiring the right people to do it because I, I don't think any of us, I mean, our expertise if as a hotel owner, uh, maybe my expertise in starting companies, but that doesn't mean I know how to design hotels or I know how to actually do all the work. So I think the first step is hiring the right team. Mm -hmm. And so, so how do you do hire designers? You pick someone. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. It's that complicated. You mm -hmm. you decide. You pick someone to do it. Yes, because of course by now you know everybody. Uh, in the design industry, so you know who is good and who fits with your yeah. program. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's great. That's great. So, now with all these great stories, we thank you so much, and we like you to share some wisdom. If somebody watching, and they will <coughs> said, "Oh my goodness, I just want to be just like him," what would you advise? Work hard, have fun, Work enjoy hard. people. So the prop, uh, the process of renovation then what determines that you, it's a hotel, it needs renovation? Well, people can generate it or, or age or maybe what the condition of the hotel is. Thank you, Tom, for joining us this morning. Thank you, Gary. Thank you for watching Hospitality Insider with Tom Cochran, chairman of Felco Lodging Trust. If you'd like to know more about this episode or any other episodes, please go to www.connytv.tv Hello, 
I'm Vanessa Cinders, Senior Vice President for Government Affairs at American Hotel and Lodging Association, and you're watching. And you're watching. And you're watching. And you're watching. You're watching Connie TV. Connie TV. Connie TV. Connie TV. Connie TV. Connie TV is the hospitality TV company, and we're very excited to be part of Connie TV. Welcome to Hospitality Insider on Connie TV with your host, Connie Kim. Hospitality Insider is an intimate look of the who's who in the hospitality industry. Up close and personal, you'll meet amazing leaders and discover their stories of successes and challenges that will inspire, educate, and entertain. With your help, we unite, we co-create, and we support each other to create better service in the hospitality industry and contribute to the world. Hospitality Insider your window to hospitality excellence.